along, everyone, to what I think will be a very special evening indeed. Um, my name is Kenneth Price, uh, and this is the second um, in potential series of conversations with people who have been uh, pivotal and important in the um, art scene in and around St. Ives. It feels very odd. Uh, this is very much Bob's space, so it feels very odd introducing Bob in his own space. Uh, he's also someone who needs no introduction. Uh, poet, painter, performer, collaborator, gallerist, libertist, deck chair host, <laughs> and a thoroughly good egg. Uh, through Café Frog, the Arts Club, and the Literary and Arts Festivals, Bob has inspired and encouraged a multitude of other poets, painters and performers. And the hedge behind me was very interesting to me because at that time I used to get people to dive through the Hawthorne hedge uh, and then go down the road to Woolworths and steal things. <laughs> <laughs> I had a gang called the Famous Five. There were six of us. <laughs> um, and th th there are other, other, other people in that photograph. In the middle there, there's Anne Howe, very prominently the tallest girl. And I really liked her. And just below me is, is Michael Hall, who was the head prefect and who was... He, he, he was remote from everybody, and I think his fam family must have been very rich, because he always had ten-pound notes in his pocket. <laughs> but I knew uh, that he stole them from him. That, that's the way you get to be a <laughs> boy. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's anything else to tell you about that, except that it was really a very thorny hedge and it was a strange thing for me to do um, but I was nine in that photograph where was it Bob? oh it's St Paul, uh, St Paul's uh, school in Dorking and um, uh, the, uh, the only other thing I could tell you about it is that the year before I'd had a very rough time at that school because there was a film <coughs> at, the, uh, at the cinema in which my father was involved. Um, he was a male nurse, and a conscientious objector and a male nurse. And he appeared on, ten, on, on, on film and said hello to us. This was from, and, from India, I think. Bob. Yeah, from India. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, afterwards, three boys knocked me down outside the school and shat on me because my my father was a male nurse and not a soldier. And because he was a conscientious objector. And, yes, thank you, very much so. Yeah, he was a conscientious objector and that, that really, they didn't like at all. And so, um, the, after that incident, I was sent down to Swallowcliffe in Wiltshire for a few months uh, to recover from it, and this is when I come back to school. So this is after. This is yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And then you had yeah. the idea about putting boys through the hedge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I, yeah. I, I thought. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I, 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 I started this gang, and, and I thought. <laughs> Yeah, I got to get them to dare them to do something. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, that if I did something that's a bit frightening, yeah. it might uh, keep the other lot away from me. Yeah. <laughs> and it did. Oh, in the front row there, there, there's a little chap. A very little chap is Jimmy Berry, who became a very successful jockey. Oh, uh, he, he's in. He's in. in, the, in the, yeah. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. He was a jockey. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Right. Okay. See what comes next. What <laughs> yeah. Ah. Well, I decided to be uh, prominent whenever 
<laughs> I could. I decided to make sure that I was seen. So you're about <laughs> um, 16 there, Bob? Yeah. And Dilston, when, when Dilston Road. Place? I was at, um, at school in Dilston Road in, in this one. And um, actually, one, when I was 16, I met somebody called Jim Taylor, who was my art master, who painted first day covers for books uh, that appeared on railway stations. I've got one of those first day covers, and I wish I had uh, found that to bring in, because it, it, it's impressive stuff. Uh, working from uh, sim sim cinema references and from his imagination, he, He'd make uh, uh, pictures of, um, of of cowboys and Indians and uh, and, uh, and 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 battle scenes and uh, well all sorts of things. And um, he got into trouble because he would painted one red and white stripe too few on on the uh, boundary uh, uh, or, uh, poles between two countries. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> he had to be really precise about everything so and these were, these thoroughly were, research it. These were postage stamps, were they? Mm -hmm. First day covers? First day, well, they, they were books that appeared right. on, on the railway stations and uh, he, he, he designed the covers of the books and then the images were sent uh, to the railway stations uh, to choose which books they wanted uh -huh. based on his picture. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and so it was interesting, interesting stuff. Um, somebody had um, decided I should go to art school, and uh, may, I can't remember his name, but uh, the very last day at school, he'd, he'd come to see my parents. And he just arrived himself at school, and he decided it was so important that I should go to art school that he made the pilgrimage from Leatherhead to Dorking and Chart Downs beyond uh, to see them and talk to them about it. Talk to parents to say that going yeah. to art school was a good idea. Yeah, and I was ill upstairs. I'd won a, I'd won um, Gombrich's. History of the uh, of art as a prize in a in a competition as a painter uh, for St John's Ambulance, uh, and I was upstairs looking at that, and while he was persuading them that I could make a living as an artist, I was reading in Gombrich how uh, painters had made their way uh, by selling their work in the marketplace, I see. and I think that stuck with me yeah. very much yeah. in, 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 in subsequent years. I've always thought that I can make my ways uh, by selling my own work in my own space yeah. and selling for other people to yeah. So what, what did your parents think of you, of you going to art school? Well, I mean, my father was was quite artistic. Well, he was he was he was very much a poet. I found a lot of poetry that he'd written in India, in a drawer in his in the house, and and, and he was he was interested in art. And there were there, there were there were ch chances on the landing of my house to find uh, books with lots of fine art in them. Uh, but he wouldn't have been very sure yeah. of me going to art school. Yeah, they <coughs> and, and, you know, and, and they weren't very well off. Well, he was a male nurse, mm -hmm. and, uh, and my mother wasn't working anymore. And, uh, and uh, you know, so, you know, it, it, it needed somebody to persuade them that I, I would find my way and would be able to. And, and he, he did it, and I can't remember his name at all, except that it begins with an A. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> but he did a good job. <laughs> We've got a little um, audio clip um, coming up, Bob. 
Um, number five. And is it, you were telling me before this, this girl here. Yes. Who is, who is that? Well, Who's that's on? Evelyn, Evelyn <laughs> Wareham. And I ran up Snowden with her. You ran up Snowden. I think you've got a yeah. recording to that. We just work at the moment as well. I will completely improvise something, and, and once once Bob starts reading or, or saying his words, that influences what I do. That's a wonderful combination. That's the words, it's very the music. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very special. Mm -hmm. it, it, very special. Um, yes. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll start into a poem that he's never heard. Um, sometimes I say play, and I decide what to do, and then when I begin. He, he adjusts the way he's playing. And it's a sort of combination. It's a two-way thing. It is. It's special. I, I just can't wait. So please, uh, can we have a, a, a piece? I don't know if we're going to do that. Where shall we begin? Shall we, shall we run up Snowden first? Yes, yes. Let's run up Snowden. This is very old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We ran up Snowden. From slab to slippery slab, leaving behind the crocodile conformity, trudging in twos up the easy bar. A hundred pair of centipede legs in thick woolen socks and stout walking shoes, and laughing at us to see us so happy to be wasting so much energy. But we ran on. And I caught her. My arm brushed her breast. We held hands after, so I could support her if she fell again. It was good to be with her then. Her eye bright, her face flushed, her body strained against the slum. I thought perhaps she was meant for me then. Adrian play 
and me and me speak, I suppose, yeah. in, 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 in that room, yeah. Very useful combination. I think. Yeah, well, I was very lucky with Adrian as, a, as an accompanist. Yeah. Probably the best I've had. Yeah. Um, well, certainly the best I've had. Yeah. Um, and the poem was written um, <coughs> when I was at art school and uh, started a, a, a poetry group which was about writing, oh. writing poetry. And uh, most of the people in the group were architects, I remember. And, um, and they, um, they said that if, I can't remember what they said, but somehow um, they said that you should write out of memory. Mm. And uh, what could I remember to write out of? And clearly, this, this was something that I still uh, remembered and felt um, something <laughs> for. It's just very poignant to hear it that photograph, I think. Let's move on to the next. We'll see what's... I don't know what... So this is... Um, well, that... The, 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 this painting at the top, Bob. Yes, it, the, it, the, the ta painting at the top is... Um, a painting that I did when I decided to move to, to Cornwall. This is before you came to Cornwall? <clears throat> yeah, but uh, I, I think I actually knew at that point that I, I was going to be able to move to Cornwall. So how, how old were you at this point, Bob? Um, well, in 1965 I moved down, so 20, 24 I would think I was when I painted that, or, tw or no, probably I was 25, yeah. 25. Wow, it's a beautiful painting. Well, and, and it's a, an abstract painting, but it, it, it's also, <laughs> at the same time, it's about uh, harbours and a wish to escape and sunsets over the sea and flight well all of those things were in it for me that's and so, they're still in your paintings aren't they all those yeah. elements are still there yeah yeah but uh, the, the, that so that was the painting i did prior to getting here and about getting here after i knew i was coming in fact ah. we'd actually uh uh, made uh, an offer on a house and had it accepted. Where was that? In St Earth. In St Earth. Yeah. Right. Lovely. We we got to look at all sorts of houses. Well, we we came we came down uh, in the spring of that year on holiday with friends to Newlyn, mm. and we came over to St Ives, and I discovered the pen with. And realised that the people were painting in the pen with, like me, mm. and there were no no people in London to speak of painting like me, <laughs> and which was a it was a big surprise. Yeah. And uh, I thought, well, then that's where I ought to be. Yeah. Uh, I came over to St Ives because of uh, somebody who'd been at art school with me, Chris Cocklin who was living in, in the town. Well, he lived in St Ives until he died. Three times, I think, mayor of St Ives. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a, gr a great man he, yeah. he was. Uh, he, he gave a lot. Uh, and he, anyhow, he, he, uh, he came to Newlyn to see us and, and brought us back to St Ives to see him. And we visited the Penwith. And that was it for me. Yeah. And, and we, you know, as fast as I could, I was making the move. I was uh, intending to move then. Yeah. I'd been in av advertising for years, and I had a private uh, advertising studio in Dilston Road in, in Kingston, just a few doors from the art school. I see. Um, so I'd never moved very far away from the art school, really. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I decided it was time to move. 
So you gave up your advertising career? I, well, I, what I thought when, when I moved down, or when I moved down with Jenny, I was married at that stage. I, I, I was living in that flat long before I was married, but I, I thought when I moved down with Jenny that, that I, I was moving away from advertising mm. uh, as well, and that I would be a gardener. <laughs> But I, I, I ended up arriving in, in October when there was no gardening. <laughs> and and I, had, I had to earn money somehow. Didn't any, know anything about the doll, so didn't use it. And, 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 and looked around for work. I had some very interesting jobs. <laughs> really interesting jobs. <laughs> I mean, the first one was working with... A man called. Uh, oh well, I I, I sold I, I sold uh, football coupon coupons door to door for a little bit. But then uh, the first real job was working for a man called Andy Shuloff, who had a studio in in Penzance, and who was a silk screen printer. He'd originally been a wood engraver. And as a wood engraver, he'd come to the conclusion it was too slow. Yeah. And he, one of his jobs was printing um, uh, all, all, all the fabrics for liberties, right. including the, um, oh, God, the... Uh, William Morris. William Morris, Will, Morris. William Morris, yeah. The William Morris mm. uh, fabrics for liberties. And uh, he decided that it was too slow using wood blocks and so he made he was in the process of making copies of the wood blocks onto big silk screens ah, right. and printing a lot more of the thing in one go right. all the way across and he 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 printed some when i arrived uh but he um he uh he was also printing uh, for West Africa and he was printing blocks with copper nails driven into them. He paint printing fabrics um, there. So if you ever see a block with copper nails driven into it in, in, in an auction room or a shop down here, that's what it is. And it came from Shulop. It was his idea. And uh, yes, he was printing. What did the copper nails do? They stretched. Well, no, he, he he made the the surface that he was going to print on from the copper copper oh, nail. So he drove oh. them in and then inked them up and oh, right. and printed with oh, with the copper nails. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then he he moved from that to silk screen, and I went to help him make silk screens. Right. Uh, and and. Uh, change silk screens. So one of my first jobs with him, apart from building a, a, a little dark room for silk screens, was to take the, the words Huey, Denny and Lovey uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and change them. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Quick, quack and quack and change them to Huey, Denny and Lovey which were the names of uh, Walt Disney's Donald Duck's children. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, so I had to change the name, and I still remember that. <laughs> it, was, it was quite an arduous job. Oh, this next one, when I arrived in St Ives, uh, I... Um, I wanted to keep going with the uh, the abstract painting. So this is 1965, mm. and there was snow at the top of the hill, mm. and I went up to the top of the hill and made some drawings, and that's a drawing of um, a yellow oil can in a hedge with a blue gate, um, a red corrugated iron shed, and and the snow. 
and bond. And, and that was a, a much looser sort of abstract painting. And that's the direction I really wanted to go in. I've been looking at Sutherland at that stage. Right, all oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's so I'm abstracting from nature, from, yeah. from things yeah. that's around. Yeah. So that's 1965. Yeah. And what's, what's come? Oh, no, we've only got half of it there. I'm looking at it downstairs. Yes, yeah. But it's, it, it, it's a poster. And uh, it, it would have been uh, for, for a festival. 1970 in, gathering. Mm -hmm. The 1970 March gathering. Yeah. That's what this is for. That's right, yeah. It was 1970 and we, we, we started a festival. Jenny and uh, Nikki Joukowska, yeah, Jen, Jenny, my then wife, and Nikki Joukowska drove around uh, uh, Wales persu persuading the Welsh uh, that if they were to have an exhibition, it should be in Cornwall, and at this end of Cornwall, it was a, it, 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 the, the country had been split into five parts, and each part ha, ha, was going to be awarded the money to stage an exhibition, and uh, uh, Cornwall had Wales as a growth region, and uh, they drove to Wales, and I don't know how they did it, but they persuaded the Welsh to come all the way to St Ives <laughs> for the exhibition. They were sort of um, twinned with them. Hmm? They were sort of twinned with Wales. Yes, yeah. And uh, uh, we, we, we had a, ten, uh, a, a, a tenting area at the top of the town and uh, stage plays in the Guildhall and in the car park, in, in the Sloop car park. I looked after a, a tent a marquee on the island and uh, I performed St Ives Feast uh, in, that, in that marquee and it was televised for local radio unfortunately uh, but that, that was, that was a, a, I thought it might be a sort of breakthrough but it wasn't um, but uh, uh, yeah and, and, and this was how Mr. Gombrich, the gold, bold hand man, was a, what, what, while eating a sandwich, was brutally attacked by a pushing bear and a crocodile, <laughs> and his subsequent adventures. <laughs> and uh, if you look at the poster downstairs, you'd see that there was an extraordinary group of people yeah. who were the cast. Uh, including Rose Hilton, who came to rehearse with us, um, uh, with me, uh, yeah, and Jenny. Jenny was in that too. Um, Bob, Bob, Bob Bourne was, was, was in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, uh, Rose Hilton came over, and. Uh, uh, she, when she came back to her car, she discovered she hadn't got enough uh, petrol to go drive home. So we took a hose pipe from uh, <laughs> from my printing press. I had a guest set, set uh, and we took a hose pipe from that and went down to the car park and siphoned, siphoned <laughs> some petrol out of somebody else's car. <laughs> That's not Mr. Gombridge of the story of art. Mm -hmm. That's not Mr. Gombridge who wrote the story of art that you read when you wanted to go to art school, is it? No, no. There's no, no reference to that. No. No, but I, he may have got the name from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, it was the poster was nailed up in uh, uh, um, uh, Roger Hilton's uh, house, 
because Rose Hilton was in there, she taken it home and nailed it up uh, in her kitchen, which was a, a narrow room that uh, joined on to another uh, narrow room where Roger was lying in bed. And after uh, he'd been lying in bed for a while, he started drawing cat crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a number of them. <laughs> well, how many are there downstairs if you haven't seen it already? Yeah, yeah. It, it, what comes next? So it's a wood engraving and silk screen there. No, then this is this was a real surprise to me. But um, <clears throat> tell us about this. This is Bob's painting from 1974, five, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. I. I when I was a deck chairman, 1971, I think, uh, I, um, I, I was sitting on the front and, uh, and, and, and had nothing really to do. And uh, somebody, Dennis Stevens, uh, who, who was at art school, or had just finished art school, and who'd been a guitarist in a club that I'd been comparing from 1970, really, um, <coughs> came down to me with a box of watercolours and gave them to me. So I started painting watercolour. Never done it before. It's totally unlike painting uh, in gouache. And, uh, and that, that's the first... Year. I think that's 1974. Yeah. That's the very first year that I used watercolour. But also, uh, that's a very um, representational, figurative painting. Well, it's well they're, they're bound to be because I was, I was sitting there looking at the, uh, <laughs> at the harbour, and that's that's what I, that's what I painted. <laughs> but a lot of people uh, wouldn't uh, think of me as having uh, been as representational as that. It's a very accomplished um, piece. Um, but it was also, that is the very first year I used watercolour, that, that, that painting. Yeah. Um, one, so one of the first ones that I did. Beautiful. Beautiful. Where is the original? Where is it now? Sorry? The original, where is it? Where is the original, Bob? I don't know. Somebody sent me a picture of it. Uh. And, uh, uh, yeah, they... they, they well, I had a, an exhibition in the library, and they all sold um, in in '74, I think, and that made me look very hard for somewhere to exhibit. Mm. So, in '75, I saw a a stall in the craft market that was empty towards the end of the the summer, and I found that the man had moved to Newquay, and I went, I didn't have the money to pay rent for a stall straight away, but I went with a, another artist who had been painting on the front, Peter Scott, we went to Newquay and asked this chap if he, he would um, uh, accept uh, the rent from us in in uh, weekly instalments, um, uh, you know, and he he said okay, but really uh, he didn't think it would be very long, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and and we moved into the stall. This uh, was in, they, in the sloop craft market. In sloop <clears throat> sloop craft uh, craft market. They had an arti artist or two in there. Who'd failed yeah. previously? Yeah. Had that but just that had just opened, had it, or it opened in <clears throat> nine, 1971, I think. Mm. I um, I made the, um, the posters for it on the, on my um, uh, on my big printer uh, uh, in 1970. I made a card publicising it to get it opened. I think we'll um, come to some photos of it later on. 
But, but this there, is, there, there I am, there on oh, the deck chair. Yeah, on the is. deck chairs. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. So, so it flares at all there, Bob. <laughs> Sorry? The flares are all rolled up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah they're, they're not, not flares there. They were, they were jeans. Um, uh, and, uh, and I had a smart, smiley face t-shirt on. And uh, I used to walk barefoot um, from St Earth along the cliffs to St Ives to do that job. But I, I had, uh, I had um, shoes with me that I changed into afterwards. So uh, what, what was happening, Dennis had brought me the watercolours at that st stage, obviously. So I was painting pictures. That would have been the year that I painted that painting. Um, 74. Um, but I was, I was putting, I was, I was uh, putting the chairs out, baiting the beach, and uh, baiting the beach. Uh, yes, with, with chairs. And it's where, where where I first really began to enjoy deck chairs. I, I was putting three jack deck chairs under what we used to call the Million Hairs House uh, on on the beach. There, there's a row of some harbour. Uh, yeah, there's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, and that, uh, and uh, I, I, I was putting three chairs there that you could see from anywhere as you came into town. And th then I was putting a couple of chairs on the walkway along. Mm. And uh, then I was in filling with chairs. <laughs> And, and collecting <laughs> money. I was doing it quite early in the morning. So what time did you start, Bob? I, I, I was walking into work, work at half past six. Oh. Walking in, and uh, I was uh, the chairs were set up by seven o'clock. Yeah. And were you working for the council then? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I was painted. I, I was paid uh, a, a pro proportion of what I. Collected, ten percent, I think, of what I collected from the deck chairs. But they provided the deck chairs. No, they did provided yeah. the deck chairs. Uh, and that is Coca Cola. You were drinking Coca Cola. Drinking Coca Cola. I, I, yeah, but I was using the Coca Cola <laughs> as, 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 like as my water, water bottle. <laughs> 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 uh, so I did. I drank the Coca Cola and then used the bottle uh, uh, for my painting. <laughs> and that was the first year that I did that. that, that, I, that the, 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 the paints have been all mented by a few uh, tubes by that time. Yeah, but, yeah. but it is that, that is seventy four. Have we got some picture? Ah, right. Ah, and that's that. Now that's that's uh, uh, the other thing that I was doing at the same time, and that could well be the same year. It's seventy three or seventy four, right. and uh, this is a publicity photograph of of me and Jim Hughes and Bridget Tickner. Uh, who were on the road as Mask. Mask. Uh, mask. And I was speaking poetry through music. Right. And uh, their manager had decided I ought to have some little drums to, to play. <laughs> so I was getting to, to grips with the, the drums. So you had a manager as well? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was uh, that we did it for a brief while. Before that, and then, and then, Jim and Bridget had moved to London, and they got themselves um, uh, managers, and the managers wanted to manage me a bit. So, <laughs> so, so, very flattering. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is there. We are. So that that's that that that's then music matters. Intentionally rude, Bob, or is it just like. Hmm? Is that it's, it's quite rude, that, isn't it? <laughs> quite phallic. Yeah, I don't know who the designer was. It's very beautiful. 
Yeah, it's a nice poster. Yeah, it's a nice poster. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And their the name is John Eccleston. Eccleston, that's right. Yeah. 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 So that was your tour poster, was it? That was your touring poster. Yeah. And you just fill in where you were appearing. Yes, <clears throat> that's right. I see. That's lovely. Does that still exist, any, any of those? Still exist? Any of these posters still exist? No. no. Well, that one does, obviously, but no. Yeah. no, no, no. You, you've got that, have you? I've got that. That's one, yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah. Who comes next? <clears throat> Another, another one of the paintings, look, 74. Very beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. Very beautiful. Amazing. I learned, I learned to use watercolour very quickly. I mean, really, because I'm saying that uh, uh, something very special because, you see, I, I painted with water paint before as yeah. a graphic designer. Gouache. But I was gouache, and mm. that is totally different. It's a totally different subject, a uh, uh, way of working. Um, uh, you did, 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 uh, gouache as, as a white base, uh, yes. an opaque base, yeah. and, uh, and you work from that. It's quite chalky and yeah. dry as flat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this one is 74, but it's along the beach from uh, where I would have been sitting as a deck chairman. So I, I think I'd moved into the craft market at that stage. Okay. I think we've got some craft market. Ah, now now my flares. Don't use the top. Let's see the top one, Bob. That's. Yeah, this is Clive Palmer, yeah. and I, and it was a photograph taken. For publicity, uh, Martin Vell Baker organised it, yeah. um, and Clive's plane Northumbrian pipes, but real Northumbrian pipes, because, well, no, not really. No, he made them, uh, <laughs> but but he, uh, he he modelled them on uh, other Northumbrian pipes that had been made in Northumbria. Right. And he used t tea teaspoons for the keys and uh, all sorts of things. He's a very clever man, Clive. We've got a little clip to drop in here. I'll just... Um, it's number two. <clears throat> um, this little clip is from Desert Island Discs and it's... Um, well, it's, it's Billy Connolly who chose um, Bob and Clive's version mm. of... Uh, the Morris Room, which is very different from certainly the one I know yeah. and the one we've heard. So there's just a little clip and you'll hear Sue Lawley talking to Billy Connolly and Billy introducing uh, the Morris Room as one of his choices. Yeah. Is that can, a can, can I just say while yes, you're sorting that out, yes. that, that uh, Billy Connolly uh, was taught banjo by Clive Palmer. Yes. When he was, when Billy was working on the docks, uh, he got to know that Clive was in in the town and play playing at folk clubs, and he asked him if he could teach him. And Clive was living in a in in a house uh, with a tent in the, in the big room. I remember, I can't remember anything else about the room. But Billy went and sat in this room with Clive and learned from Clive how to play the banjo. And then he went on the road uh, playing banjo, but telling stories as well. Yeah. And I actually saw him perform in, um, where was it? Well, I saw him, uh, and, and Bridget and, and, and Jimmy and I saw him perform at a, at a gig that we were doing, where he'd come along to try and make sure that he had a place the next week. It was a folk <laughs> club, and he was um, 
telling telling stories and playing banjo. Oh, were they and jokes or was he telling jokes or? Yes, yeah. <coughs> he joked. So a mixture of the yeah. two. <coughs> yeah. Oh. And uh, yeah, and whether he remembered that when he chose Morris Room, or whether it was purely that it was Clive, and uh, you know, but I, I'm sure it would would have been in the back of his head Absolutely. somewhere. Yeah. Because it was. Uh, a night which was really important to him yeah. as a touring yeah. uh, banjo player yeah. Uh, yeah. to make sure that he got on space the... on that <laughs> on that platform that I had yeah. um, the following week yeah. uh, that he had it the following week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's, see, let's see the clip. In this advanced stage of my life, I have found that it, the world is about people. I like places where there are people that I like. And I, I don't care about places where there's nobody that I like. Yeah, sure. But, but you must, you know, when you're sitting there in the beige party or not sort of being boring and smoking the cigars, do you, you must, and it's one of those standard questions, but in a way one has to ask it of you more than anyone else, you must pinch yourself, you must think, my God, I've come a long way. You know, I could still be a the, welder on Clyde's. Yeah, yeah. You know, I stand on the deck looking down San Fernando Valley, or when we arrive in Scotland and we drive up the driveway of, of my place, it's a big long driveway with, with those stone mushrooms, you know, looking up, and then this big house at the end with turrets and flags and all, and rolling like a lock in the garden. You're a laird. Yeah, I'm a laird, you know. I didn't know. Well, I'm not a laird in as much as, it used to be the laird's house, and, and up there they call me the laird for a laugh, you know. But I got a letter the other day from one of the lairds, and it was about for money for the local church. The roof was falling in or something. And uh, he said, it's up to yourself, but most of the lairds, <laughs> like I was in <laughs> I was included. I don't want to be a laird. It's against everything I ever stood for in my life. I don't mind people kidding on, but give me a break. <laughs> this, is, this is a grace. This is something very dear to my heart. It's by Bob Devereux and Clive Palmer. Now, Clive is a wonderful banjo player, and he was part of the incredible string band in the 70s that just, they just blew me away. And uh, this is this is a piece called the Morris Room, written by Bob Devereaux, who's 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 doing the talking on here. Placed on a large green cushion in the Morris Room, together in the lamplight on the sofa, we make such a charm. We should say this way. The Morris Room, sung by Bob Dero and Clive Palmer on, on, the, on the banjo, yeah? Yes, that was him just plonking away at the background there. <laughs> now, Billy, you've got plenty of rules you live by. Let me read some to you. Oh, yeah. Morris Room uh, the first thing about it is that uh, uh, there was a girl called Brent, Gwenda Brown when I was at art school, who kept giving me books. <laughs> uh, because she thought that I could share them with Anna Holton, her friend, who she thought I should be with. And, and, and his, her, her friend's father, who designed the CND badge, um, and, uh, was very interested in books too. <laughs> I can't remember how, how her thinking went, but anyhow, she gave me these books, and and one of them had uh, was a book about Barbellion, and in that book uh, was his story of coming uh, to uh, visit a doctor in London in his in his house and barking his shins on on on, uh, on 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 a bicycle pedal on the way in but finding himself in this wonderful room which was like a double cube in in proportion and was lined with William Morris wallpaper and how 
it was all so beautiful, the room, that uh, he was in awe of the girl that he was playing Ludo with and couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> so that was the story. And I had this book with me uh, when I was working in a restaurant and I was working with a chap called Jim Hughes. And he asked me if I'd accompany him when he went out and uh, went up, uh, back home with um, a young waitress that he was interested in, but he didn't want her to be scared of him. And uh, whether I'd come with him, and uh, uh, and I, I hadn't had the back book with me, I, I don't know why. And uh, uh, we um, we walked to Carbis Bay, and, in, and we sat in a caravan, and he explained to her what we did as uh, uh, as two performers, and I, he, and how we wrote, and I produced the book, and uh, we wrote Morris Room then, just like that. At that moment. Yeah, and and responding to uh, what was happening in the book, yeah. Yeah. and he wrote the tune. The tune. Yeah. We uh, we decided on the mu music. Yeah. All of this. <laughs> no, it's lovely. <laughs> Ridic ridiculous thing to have done. <laughs> it's such a lovely. That's such a different version from any I've I've heard. Um, it's interesting yeah. to hear it done like that, in presumably the original way. Yeah, that's yeah. It, yes, that's much nearer to the the original way. Yeah, yeah. lovely. So. Um, and, and there I am with Clive. <laughs> I don't know, I don't have got anything to say about that. Flares, Billy. Flares. Flares. Is flares. Yeah. I mentioned earlier tongue in cheek about flares, but like, might have been vindicated. <laughs> Those are some serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're, yeah, they're, 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 they're great in those. <laughs> Where was that, Bob? I, I can't remember, love, that one. Looks like some festival. It's a festival. Mm. Not and I'd come back to join them at that festival. I'd been in Sidmouth performing. Right. And I hitched back to join them. Wasn't one of the Paul Goose fairs? Ah, it? yes. Yeah. It was. Thank you. Thank you. It is. Paul Goose. Paul Goose. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. There you are. <laughs> there we are in yeah. in Sidmouth. This is on tour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, not really on tour. Going <coughs> only to Sidmouth oh, to perform <laughs> du during during uh, the folk festival in 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 Sidmouth, and we were performing in various clubs around Sidmouth. Right. Uh, and I think I think we did perform in a. In a, in, in a tent as well. So there was a lot of scope for turning up and getting paid and yeah, <clears throat> a lot of the clubs that we oh could yeah, just turn well, and well, working with Clive too, he'd got a real standing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but I well, I had too a reasonable standing by then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it was fairly easy to find places to perform. And, yes. And you could sort of eke out a living doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. A life, not 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 a, a good life. Life. <laughs> <laughs> A life, yeah. 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 You could breathe. <laughs> what was next? Yeah. Oh, this ah, and there's nice. another <laughs> craft market. That yeah. that's my stall in the craft market. Yeah. <clears throat> this is uh, the one. You mean the one in the middle? Mm? The whole of that yeah. feature yeah. is my stall. And I'm in the middle at the back, yeah. And uh, the rest of them are Tom Hall's band. And I, I met Tom Hall first when I first went on the road with with Mask. Mm. I was booked to go to Northampton, and when I arrived, I found that I was going to be playing with Tom Hall's band. And, uh, and and in Tom Hall's band 
was a chap who li who who just finished um, a study in in Bournemouth mm. and who would run the folk club in Bournemouth, a guitarist, Gerald Hull. Oh. And and uh, and now suddenly he was playing with Tom Hall. And uh, I got to know Tom's band very well. And uh, uh, they staged things in the Guildhall here. I compared them. And I went on tour with Tom's band. I think there might be something about that a bit later on. Yeah. And Jay uh, arrived one year to play with Tom Hall. And then she, uh, the next year, she actually invigilated in the gallery. This is the Salt House. Mm -hmm. The Salt in House. In the Salt House, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jenny, Jenny uh, started etching. And uh, every time she sold a... A, a, a painting, she replaced it with two e two etchings, and so I was being pushed out of my stall, and I had to look for something else, and I went up the road, and saw that the um, the, the the shop uh, in Norway Square uh, was uh, up for let rent, and then discovered that the landlord was the, the man who I'd been working for until after midnight sometimes uh, uh, as a waiter. Because <laughs> I'd been changing into shoes and going to work as a, a waiter every night. What? <laughs> where, were you, where were you waiting for? It, it, um, uh, what sort of food? Well, it, it, it was called... Uh, uh, what was it called? The Harbour Restaurant. Harbour Restaurant, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, it, uh, and it, it's well, it's not there as a, a restaurant anymore, but it, it ran right through to um, Fourth Street. Ah, uh, right. And uh, Terry Frost did a lot of waiting as well, didn't he? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Distinguished waiters in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, about this time, were, were you one of the hippies? Got the hostility from the locals. I didn't experience too. Now it's an interesting thing. I never experienced the the, the trouble from the, the locals, but in fact, there were notes, notices in the pub, uh, in all the pubs, saying that they wouldn't serve long-haired people. But I had grown grown my hair really quite long. And uh, I wasn't about to cut it, <laughs> and they accepted me, and uh, uh, you know, and and were really fine with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> no accounting for taste. <laughs> <laughs> See what's coming underneath here. So we're getting the salt house. Oh, and you, yeah, no, the. That, that that that's one of my paintings that I did at the time. Yeah, yeah, it's both of those. Yeah, 1974 again. So this is the salt house at the bottom. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, there's the salt house. Uh, it, it actually had a it had a, a a finger pointing out that that said that it was a gallery. Come come back down a bit, Steve. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, uh, it didn't have that s sand in the middle when when I took it on, in the middle of the square. That came... That was sand, was it? Yeah, that, that happened about, uh, not that long after, within a couple of years. But I moved into the salt house um, and I was, I was making paintings of the deck chairs and beach huts at that stage. And um, about two years before I finished being in the in in the craft market, I um, so about 1978. Yeah, that's right. 1980. 1980. No, no. Yes, that's right. Yeah, 1978. I started painting uh, the beach huts and the deck chairs, 
which I admired all the time yeah. that I'd been working on the on the deck chairs, uh, looking across it and wondering what the, it was like on the beach where the beach huts were. Yes. And uh, so I started making those those sort of paintings. Yeah, that ne yeah, that the next mm -hmm. painting there uh, is a watercolour that I did, which uh, uh, I painted so fast that I was able able to get it framed uh, and put it in the window with the poppies and 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 salt uh, and the sauce bottle that I painted it in uh, in front of it. <laughs> Who's in this? Is Ron Walker? This, hmm? Is this Roy picture Walker. on the right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that that sword house had Roy, Roy Ray coming out of the sword house uh, uh, during his own exhibition. There, he had one of the first exhibitions, and that's Jay invigilating at the sword house with a piano accordion okay. uh, and it's Jenny, my wife, that's going in with a cup of tea. <laughs> and that's a bit earlier, uh, that, that, that's the year it opened, and it's Roy Ray's, uh, Roy, Roy Walker's exhibition and, and, and a piper walked in at the opening. A piper walked in? Yeah, so, I, uh, so I performed with the pipe piper. And, the tall man there in the in corner, I read, yeah, that's Peter Pierman. I had a lot to do with him. Great friend, uh, diver, um, and knowledgeable about stone. And I went out on his boat and looked back at, uh, at the cliffs and saw uh, the, the, uh, the houses on the cliffs. Uh, and uh, that, that was one of the things that stirred that poem that I wrote about uh, St. Ives, seven o'clock, the sea comes to feed. Oh, that one. Yeah. Roy Walker's exhibition there. That was Roy Walker's exhibition? Yeah. You yeah. Saw, I think we'll see it, a, a picture of it. What's next? Of, 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 mm. of, yeah, there we are. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. They, they were, that, I, I printed a postcard for, for every exhibition and then I, I used it mounted uh, uh, to, to make a, an invite and the artist didn't pay for the in invite but I sold the postcards mm -hmm. oh. and, and, and that paid eventually for the invites. Wow. <laughs> That's the way I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there's a picture of uh, uh, it's a picture of uh, of uh, an early one, one of the earliest of them, of of Roy seeing uh, the swimmers in the pool below him. He's right at the bottom of the pool, and he's looking up at them. Uh, he doesn't immediately read like that, but uh, that it was looking up in the pool. He he was learning to swim. And, and finding that he spent more time on the bottom of the pool <laughs> than anywhere. And he started looking up at other people who were competent swimmers. And uh, he thought that those would be lovely subjects for paintings. His, his history was, um, one, one thing was that he had been uh, um, an admirer of uh, Leger. Mm. For, for, yes. for years and then collected uh, uh, pictures of paintings of Lajes, <laughs> not paintings, but pictures of paintings. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and the other thing is that he'd worked in a car factory uh, for, for years and all these swimmers, you know, or lots of them, it amused me, uh, uh, had that, you see the shape of the the two bums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. You, you could put the wheels <laughs> in under them. They were in almost all the painting. <laughs> Subconsciously. Yeah. But, then, but I liked it. <laughs> I remember a lovely thing that Bob did at the Salt House when uh, <clears throat> Roy Walker died. There was a, a massive white canvas on the wall. And he just invited anyone who remembered Roy to come and 
make a gesture on the canvas, which is a really beautiful thing, actually. I remember that very vividly. Yeah. Yeah. What comes next? <clears throat> oh, these are the oh, furniture paintings. Yeah. So these, 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 these started uh, probably in 1978, I think, and uh, and uh, and they they kept going, and uh, they became the uh, 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 the inspiration for my moving back to abstraction, and it was it was it was actually it was. Uh, one of of, uh, of the beach and seeing the beach huts through um, through through some uh, uh, beach um, oh. oh beach changing breaks no wind the breaks wind, wind, yeah, wind breaks mm. yeah see so seeing the beach through the wind breaks and. Uh, uh, I brought it back to the gallery mm. and I put it on its side when I went downstairs and when I came up I saw saw it and didn't recognise it for a split second as my painting. Mm. Now I both saw its abstract qualities mm. uh, and, and, it, and it said you should get back to painting abstracts. <laughs> it just told me and so I did. Mm. Uh, beautiful. And the next one? But, yeah. It's very beautiful. But this is a more <coughs> oh that yeah it's well, semi abstract isn't it? Well, the, 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 neither of those were at all abstract. The, it's, it's just that red yeah. back of the tent, yeah. and and this one, yeah, that's the way they 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 were in the tent. It was about the relationship between them, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As well. When you're doing the um, the deck chairs, were they still hanging washing up along the wharf there, with drying the clothes, and that's gone by then? No, that had gone. Oh. Now, when I was doing the deck chairs, I, um, I, I looked after my daughter, who played on the beach, and uh, I, I looked after two or three other children who were playing on the beach, and their mothers brought me sandwiches. <laughs> um, I rehearsed with uh, Jim and Bridget for performances. Uh, uh, I, I, I did a bit of writing. I walked up and down the beach with Francis Cudrill talking plans of how we could get on in our lives, what we could do. Uh, uh, what else? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, don't know, I, I was doing all sorts of things and somebody, uh, lots of people uh, had names for me and and, and, and were being entertained by me in different ways. Uh, the people at the guild hall um, got binoculars out and watched me from the guild hall to see how I was managing to collect so much money. <laughs> um, uh, 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 a man uh, on, on, a, on a deck chair ran a book on whether I'd miss anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and you never did? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, but it still worked for him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, 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 I encouraged uh, school, school boys to come and help me bring the chairs in at the end of the, the afternoon. And then I put shoes on and walked to the restaurant and became uh, the waiter uh, until midnight I was waiting and, and people would see me in one place and then in the other place. <laughs> I'd started at six o'clock in the morning and, <laughs> and walked in to, to, to uh, uh, get a train uh, and then, uh, or sometimes I walked along the cliff, yeah. sometimes. And uh, and then uh, oh yeah and of course there's a memory while I while I think of it uh, one day I was uh, just getting ready to leave work for work 
and my next door neighbour, who was always up and about, don't know how he managed it, said, I don't know where you're going today. And I said, I'm going to work then, it's like I always do. And he said, uh, well, there's, no, there's nothing to go to. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, the restaurant's burned down. And I said, get away. <laughs> um, so anyhow, I went, went walking up the road uh, barefoot. Uh, I like I like pair barefoot, and I walked um, uh, along the top of the cliffs that that day uh, to St Ives, and I could see a bit of a, a plume of smoke in the distance. And when I got there, all the waiters were standing on the beach, looking at the, at the restaurant which had burned down, and. Uh, but the tables and chairs were still there, I, in the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I thought that was extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all the waiters got together and rebuilt the restaurant. Mm -hmm. It was the uh, waiters and, and, and uh, the owner mm -hmm. who, who rebuilt the restaurant. Uh, a lot of them had building skills, but I didn't get involved. Yeah. Uh, but I, um, because I was doing the lectures. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps we'll take a little break there. Would that be mm -hmm. take a break? Yeah. This is Grey Lightfoot, um, and it's a poem called The Cyberman Sang in Norway Square. <laughs> and um, it's it's a wonderful poem. I don't know if you remember yes. it, but yeah. it's, it's his poem about Norway Square, about Bob. And he, he describes Bob as the Beachside Baudelaire. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a name to sort of write a poem about, and I came up with a, a title called The Cyberman Sang in Norway Square. So I've had to fit the poem to fit that, really, but uh, anyway. Look, there's a crowd, said the younger of two keen eyed, hungry gulls that circled the square. He's starving artist, mate, sighed the elder. You've not got a chance of anything there. Below them, a sanctum, a low-walled court, adorned with palm trees and blue hydrangea. It's festival time, Norway Square, St Ives. That's Cornwall, not the one in Cambridgeshire. As with all spiritual gatherings, there are sacred texts and rites to prepare. This community comes together as each one takes the sacrament of the chair. There are fellows well met since the last time. Each passes with the grace of a stare till seats fill all available spaces with the hope there'll be one or two spare. Do you think that sky could be turquoise? Says one as she wrestles a folding chair. Cerulean blue, smiles a knowing friend, with a small splash of viridian there. <laughs> this granite Binnacle encompasses performers from all points everywhere. It's uneven flag support all nations, whether you've come by bus or Ryanair. And there's our Bob, raconteur, Bob Vivant, venerated compare beyond compare. The audience wrapped in his twinkling eyes, a veritable beachside Baudelaire. This barker delivers his courting call, bobbing and flapping as passers by stare. He's got them hooked and reels them in before they manage to pass through the thoroughfare. Musicians, bards and tellers of tales. Artists paint their pictures in the plain air. All of us made up with stars in our eyes, each of us loving our vanity fair. And then it's time for me to take the stage. A silhouette beneath the sun's gaudy glare takes a nervous glance at his audience and hopes they won't mind too much when I swear. But everyone wants to play their part. A triumph Bonneville off up to air, whose bass line drowns out the virgin poet who will wait for it passing next time he's there. And deep down he knows he'll be there again as he joins in the communal prayer. We were in the Morris room together in the sunlight, on a teetering chair. All dues are paid and respect is given. 
and I'm perfectly willing to swear not even a falling pin could be heard when a cyberman sang in Norway Square. Thank you. Perhaps I should say something about Norway Square at this point. Yeah. Because, well, when I took, took Gallery on, and, um, Ma uh, Max Saunders told me that uh, he also owned the square. And uh, so I, I realised that I, I'd got the freedom to use it. It wasn't council stuff. And when people like Tom Hall uh, uh, turned up during the summers, I would invite them to, to perform in the square. So this is a beginning. But then suddenly there was sand in the square. And then the new mayor of St Ives at the time was Chris Cro Cochlin. And he planted the square with uh, new plants and, and put the palm tree in and, <laughs> and changed it again. And, and it was incredible. And, and, and so then, it, was, it, it had sand in it? Yes, sand, sand in the square at that stage and uh, we might find there's a picture of the sand in the square because I've got one mm -hmm. looking through the, the square window of um, Steve Dubb running a, a, a class of children yeah. in, in the square on the sand. Uh, but then, uh, I don't know who it was laid the, the paving stone but I do know who took them when they were taken up because I took them back to my gallery, my, my studio in, 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 in St. Earth and built my studio on them. So I, I, I walk, walk in the studio on Norway Square. <laughs> here's, here's a little... Um, clip of you Bob in um, in Norway Square. This is this is how Bob could get the crowd going actually it's just Oh what the crowd why Oak warm the frame and bore the beam Oak channel water turn the wheel Oak seal the sail and water the boat Oak was the ink floated words Those words that can't get over they're weather every storm at sea um, if not words are chosen well, they will outlast the oak itself. <laughs> that was quite Bob Dylan, actually. Oak. 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 It was oak. Oak, right. Yeah, and it was written... Uh, I don't, I don't, we may find a bit of, uh, of, of uh, oak. Uh, uh, somewhere else because uh, I, I I wrote a bit of it uh, to be carved into handrails beside the Tamar uh, and it was coming. we are carved in oak yeah. we, we will outlast you if we are chosen well we will outlast the oak itself yeah. and then out, out of that came the poem Oak fattened the ball, oak cured the ham, oak was a shield board for the man, oak smoked the fish, oak tan the hide, oak. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, this is what I was worried about. Oak. Yes, yes. I won't do the whole of it. No, no, it's lovely. But, but I, I did, <coughs> since, since then, it's in Norway Square. It's, a right, it's, it's been used in many different ways. Mm. And the most surprising one mm. was when Steve um, Knightley. Knightley came and asked me uh, if uh, he could uh, play his song about Oak and whether I would speak the poem through it. And without rehearsing, we did that. And I really like what, what, what came out of it. Yeah. But then Steve Knightley was somebody who knew me very well because uh, I met him first in 
very early in, in the time that I was touring mm. um, uh, with music. Uh, he was running a folk club in Exeter. Right. And, uh, and then I, I put him on in, in St. St. Ives and in Salt House and so on. But I, I really would like to put what we did together on on tape or on mm. or something. The video's terrific, I think. Mm. Right. Good. Let's carry on. <clears throat> What's coming next? So this is more of the. Ah uh, yes. Well yes. So yes. So when Jay was invigilating in the gallery mm. and playing the piano, piano accordion while she was invigilating. I staged an exhibition uh, which had Peter Peter Markey boats in it, and uh, and that's a picture of that. And then alongside it, whilst she was there, uh, uh, Tom and and Jay uh, 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 had been playing together. And they played together in Norway Square. I think they may even have accompanied me a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we took to the road uh, uh, and, and, and did a tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, the poster that I made for the tour. That's lovely. Yeah. And next. Ah. Uh, this. This is, yeah, this is uh, something else that happened in 1980. <coughs> is it you, is I, it? Yeah. 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 It, it, I was approached in about 1978 <coughs> or 9 to uh, write a piece for a composer called Christopher Brown, a choral work, uh, the words for a choral work. Uh, based on uh, 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 celebrating or uh, designed to celebrate Borle Smart in some way. Um, because Borle Smart, the painter, uh, it was the son, his son, uh, who, who, who commissioned it. Um, anyhow, I, 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 that, that's a picture of me. Uh, finding that I'd been roped in uh, to perform a little bit too. There was a bit spoken in it. And then that's the two main singers, uh, Wendy Ethorn in the middle and John Barrow. And on the left, that is the composer, Christopher Brown. And tucked in behind us, there are the three uh, uh, musicians who were uh, who came from Nancledra. This is the Guildhall, is it? It's in the Guildhall, mm. yeah. It's rather a sp splendid backdrop, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah. I, I, I would, I, until that day, I've not been aware of the backdrop. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. yeah that is. I'd it's heard it, maybe is that Marston Prophet's backdrop? Ah. Could that be right? Yes, that right. would be right, mm, yeah. definitely. Is it still around? Do you know still? Hmm? Martin. Martin. Look at the backdrop. The backdrop's still there. Mm. Is it? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Now that, that's a liner cut. Actually, it's downstairs. I, I did. I think it is. I did a series of these lino cuts uh, on one or two blocks, reduction print. Uh, overnight that were very successful in the early 70s. 1975? Yeah, it says that. Yeah. It's so delicate for a line of printers. So yeah, well, what, what I was working with was the fact that Lawrence's ink was very transparent mm. and so I could do things almost like painting where uh, a green and a, a could go over, uh, uh, sorry, a yellow could go over a blue and make a green. Yeah. 
and 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 so on. So it was it was sort of painting, and I was doing it on two two blocks, and gradually cutting them away. That's reduction printing. Yeah. Where's that cottage, Bob? Up on top of the hill uh, uh, above St Earth. It's mm. gone now. It's gone. But I was fascinated by cottages like that that mm. were all over the countryside at the time. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, and this is the beginnings of using the Salt House Gallery. So I'd taken the gal gallery on. This is before I had the big room. And uh, the first exhibition was uh, Roy Ray, and uh, I called it Seen from Above. And he made a whole lot of landscape painting, ab ab landscaped abstractions. And that's Tony, Tony O'Malley with Roy in that, in that photograph. So you were, you were putting on um, the work of painters and selling their work for them? Yes. Yes. I did that, and that, yeah. that had all grown out of that a time when I, I, I read about uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the painters. When I was in my bedroom and, yeah. and, and Mr A, whoever he was, yeah. um, mm. who I'm eternally grateful to, we would probably never remember his name, <laughs> uh, uh, but because he never he never taught me, and he would just come into the room, seen my work, and decided he must go and tell my parents since I was about to li leave um, the school uh, that I must go on to art school. Quite incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyhow. Uh, I don't know how I wandered back to that from there. Uh, yes, at that time I decided that yeah. I would, I would uh, make space for other people to be able to sell yeah. as well. And so this is uh, the downstairs at the Salt House, yeah. and it's Claire White who's sitting in the middle, and who, who was re reviewing exhibitions for all the galleries at the time. So she got a seat. Mm -hmm. so she, she got, got a seat. seat. <laughs> yeah, and she's, she's uh, oh, in her 80s. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, about my age, actually. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's, she, she, she got a seat. And she's invited uh, three mayors and mayoresses to be present at her exhibition. Wow. So, and then the Tsar is standing immediately behind me, yeah. and I'm at the back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yanko Fellow, Bob? Uh, Yanko's there, yeah. yeah. Yes, Yanko had just had a show in the same room, and, and he, he'd really got to know Claire and appreciated her. Yeah. So, Bob, you're. you're Going from deck chair attendant yes. to gallery owner. Yeah. I mean, how did other artists perceive that when they looked at you? Sorry? How did they, you know, a few years ago, the mid 70s, you were a deck chair attendant, yeah. now you're, yeah. you know, a movie <coughs> shaker in the Sinai's art scene. That's quite, yeah. a, quite a, well, an uplift. Not really. No. I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm asking, I'm asking. I, I, yeah. yeah, well, I'm telling you, um, artists were doing all sorts of things. Terry Frost was a waiter for a long time, yeah. so yeah. I don't think there was That's any part of, of it in that part of the yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, 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 I've been <clears throat> showing my own paintings in the Sword House for a, a, a spell then, before I took that. Well, 1975 I took, I, I moved into the Sword House. In 1980, when I started showing other people's work, in so it's a lot less commercial than, should we say? I think it's, it's a lot less commercial. The art scene. Uh, it wasn't. No, I mean people needed to sell. But Claire had never had an exhibition in her life, mm -hmm. and she was in her 80s, and she was a very fine uh, uh, painter in a sort of graphic way, and. Uh, and uh, it was a very successful show. It was all of 
paintings that she'd done in the West Indies. And uh, yeah, and she sold ooh, more than half the show, I think. Which was really something I didn't often achieve, you know. Mm. Uh, and it was great uh, to do that for her. And, or to see it happen. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is something else happening. Because I got asked to write an opera. Uh, As you do. Uh, yeah, it's in 1979. Uh, I, uh, I, somebody came, Brian Smart came looking for me to see if I could write an opera. And he brought Christopher Brown, who was the composer, with him. And uh, it was a, an opera uh, Oh no, sorry. I wrote the, the choral work for for, Chris, for for Brian Smart. Now it's Christopher Brown said, "Could I write an opera?" That's right. Follows on, and uh, and I said, "Sure, well, I could have a go." And uh, uh, I had I had had this book by uh, uh, Countess Dormois, and uh, there was a story about a ram. Uh, in the book, Ram King, and uh, I took that story as the theme for the opera. Um, but these are, uh, the, the, all the children were given a wood engraving by me, where the king and the ram look, made the princess. It's wonderful, mm. you see. It's really beautiful. And then uh, I, I've got the jester and a and, and hermit. Uh, on, the, on the left there at the bottom uh, because they took an important part and these are children performing in Ram King. Where is this pub? That was in Birmingham. In Birmingham? Yeah. <clears throat> mm. And the, uh, the lad who was king in that, it turned out that he uh, had a, a flat in St Ives, and they, uh, he stayed in touch, yeah. and his brothers bought paintings from me. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, he went on to do very well with Welsh opera, ah. uh, and uh, uh, well, they were great. All the children, really great. It's beautifully staged. What, what's, what's coming up? <clears throat> oh, now that's a picture of uh, a house on the way into St Ives. Uh, uh, sorry, to Penzance. On, on on the right. Kanagi. Uh, Kanagi. Manor. Kanagi. Yeah, which Chris Cochrane bought. You know my old friend uh, who became mayor of St Ives at the time, and who planted the trees in Norway Square, he bought that and there was a party at some stage and uh, we were all in it. Uh, so on the left there, uh, at the bottom, just alongside the bicycle mm -hmm. with a straw hat, that's Chris Cochrane. In the middle, extraordinarily, because I wasn't performing with him at all then, that's Adrian O'Reilly who became, for me, the best accompanist I'd ever had. And, and on, the, on the right, there I am. In, and, and above, in, in the middle, with the white hat on, that's Zara. Uh, uh, with the shirt sunshade over her head, and beside her, Jenny. Uh, and, uh, and I could go round that, that, that bit, picture and tell you the names of almost everybody who's there. It's got uh, sort of it, 1920s theme to it. <clears throat> yes, it, 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 it's, I can't remember, but it was, it was a party in that house, yeah. and I, I suspect yes. it was a party was, that was celebrating the fact that Chris had taken it on.
that's something very different. I um, I, I started um, working for Roy Ray a bit, uh, teaching, and uh, there he is, there I am, and I was explaining to you how uh, uh, there's a difference between as uh, uh, watercolour and gouache. Well, behind Roy's head there, there's a picture of two teapots and two oranges. One of them's painted in watercolour and the other one in gouache. And that's my painting that I did for the art school. I think it's still there so that people could see the difference and appreciate it. So you can go and look at it. <laughs> Ah, uh, I moved into a, the big part of the um, of the salt house in 1983, and at the same time, I took on a barn, which I was going to turn into my home. And there I am, working on the barn, breaking down. The, the dairy ready for it to be used. Uh, there's the pond in front there. Uh, or herons used to uh, come to the pond uh, and, uh, and fish in it. Uh, behind it there are a couple of other little buildings. One of them is Pigsty. I wrote Ram King in, 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 in this little building. Uh, because I've got a garden growing, growing things rather well because because of the pig's dying. <laughs> now this is interesting, the one on the left, isn't it? Oh well yeah, yeah. Well that's me talking to Patrick Heron when I opened the big room at, at the Salt House and it's an exhibition of Steve Dunf Dove's paintings and Patrick chanced to say that I wouldn't be a proper gallery until I bought work from the artists I was showing. <laughs> and she's interesting. <laughs> I, I, I was paying for their publicity. I was doing everything I could for them. But uh, later on, he became a, a very good friend, Patrick, and. Uh, uh, one year, he he phoned me up to come and watch television with him and watch a program about the arts with him on his on his television. And unfortunately, uh, Jenny, my first wife, had just left me, and I told I told him that she'd gone, and and that I was uh, not at my best, and he could come to me perhaps. And he decided not to. But I wish I'd gone. Yeah. I wish I'd gone. I'd, I'd, I'd been to see him before. Mm. I mean, he, he was quite prominent in my arriving in, in St Ives at all. One, one, one of the reasons that I came was because uh, of a te teacher at my art school called Derek Hyatt, uh, who particularly admired... Um, uh, uh, Patrick Heron. Um, Mer Derek Hyde had been a, 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 a pilot and uh, Heron had flown and, uh, and they had that in common and they got to know one another a bit. And Hyde, just after I came down, he, he brought uh, a group of students from Kingston to see um, Heron and uh, and uh, was talking to him about the garden and, and the sea and how it was influ influencing his paintings and at the time Heron said it wasn't and then a year later he published a booklet uh, showing how uh, <laughs> his paintings were <laughs> Contrary, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> by, uh, by, by his garden, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, he, perhaps he decided there was nothing wrong with that because 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, and of course there was nothing wrong yeah. with it. Yeah. But uh, when I went to see him the first time, yeah. uh, I can't remember how it came about, but he showed me this huge painting on the wall, and I put my hand up like that, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm trying not to look at the plug point that you've <laughs> standing on. <laughs> And, and, and that impressed him enormously. <laughs> and, and then uh, again, I, I, he he uh, he met me uh, outside the the tape, and uh, uh, and uh, he said he go he went up sometime. I said I like I like your painting, and he said yeah, and I, I'm pleased with it. I go up to the top of the island to look at it sometimes. And I said, yes, well, that would be about the size it was when you drew it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I think he he, <laughs> he, put, he... he put that and the other observation together and invited me back to, to watch films with him and things. And of course, I never got to do it. Yeah. And that was a great shame. Yes. <laughs> I shouldn't, Great story. I shouldn't have let anything get, get in the way. <laughs> and then on the other side, that, that's the womb chair made by Max Barrett, which, uh, oh, Casper loved it, the womb chair. He used to go climb up the back of it and kiss it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was a lovely thing, the womb chair. Went to Germany. Uh, <coughs> Jay and uh, Matthew um, Grispian playing in a show at the Salt House um, and in the same show uh, Brio Brass the five musicians the quintet that had accompanied me with Christopher Brown uh, in Seascape um, Adrian King at the front there, on the left, he lives in Nancledra. Mm. Um, we did keep in touch quite a bit after, afterwards. I had him play in Norway Square, Square and in the gallery. Yeah, and down below is my first opera on tour, Shaft's Kern. Round, round, round King in Darmstadt. Is that the opera you referred to before, Bob? That's a different opera. <clears throat> uh, Not the Ram. Ram King is the is the first one that I wrote for. So that is the one yeah. that I mentioned before. Bob yes. translated it into German. I see. That, so this is translated into German. Yeah, I had, it, I, I had it. I had it. Did I? Did I have that one? Translated? Did. Yes, I did. I, I got it translated into German. Um, yeah, using uh, uh, a woman who was invigilating uh, the St Ives Gallery, so just across the road from me, and recordings of how to speak German. Uh, I, 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 I wrote bits that way and then went across and checked with her and we put it together. Mm -hmm. So we, we translated it into German Wonderful. and it went to Darmstadt. Right. And Chris Brown and I went to it. It was a big, it was a big uh, hall, a very like the festival hall. Uh, I've never been anywhere quite so grand and I really thought I'd made it. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but nothing happened afterwards, that was it. <laughs> Going to move sideways a little bit now. For um, this is this is one of my favourite poems of Bob Sitting Bull, and um, I should put the date of this is number three actually. Steve. Mm. This is uh, Bob with Charles Shamari and Mark Jeffries. Oh like yes. <laughs> on Hepworth and 
me a boy of eight idly turning pages propped up on pillows convalescing sandwiched between a mattress and a weight of books chanced on a portrait of an Indian was a chieftain in full feather the profile of an eagle and an eagle's gaze and then there was his kid so tan like leather crazed like the valley of some dried up river the face slipped into this child's subconscious and lodged itself amongst the folds of memory a face to come to him. He lives there to this day. It was a map of Sitting Bull's existence, an emblem of his wisdom and his age. But it was more than that. It had such dignity. <laughs> that dreamed of face. I covered it for me. when I saw his photograph, my friend said, do you know your Auden? Have you read him? I hadn't read him, Charlie, but I knew that face. A treasury of furrowed, proud so deep, it was a face I'd seen in sleep. It was a dreamed of face. Oh, so much life must live within a face like that. So much living fat and living lean, it was a knowing face, not just a poet's face. Much more, a history. And it was Hepworth. Have you seen her portrait in the museum case? It's downstairs before you step into her garden. There's a face. Well, I saw that picture, or one much like it, in some catalogue or in some exhibition not long before I moved down here from London. I thought it was the best thing in the place. Saw there. And marble dust. And drinking. It's growing the eyes up. Letting the tips of fingers do the work. on the moors, out in all weathers, pain, and caring, and not taking care, and not caring enough about herself, smoking, I almost missed out smoking, all this and more made the man she wore. And that was me. I'm almost 73. I'm gazing in the mirror. The crow's feet are advancing. But I'm not ready. I've seen some lean years. But I have not had the fact not spent enough time looking at the sun. Can I be eight again? Please, let it be simple, Mark. Let me be dreaming of these marks. I coveted a face, but I'm not ready. It's not me yet, that dreamed of face. <laughs> Sitting ball. Auden.
Do you remember that, Bob? Yeah, yeah. A great atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they were very good with me. Yeah. 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 Lovely. That's the round theme, the feast. And, and and that was on a a, a, a a table which when it when it when it ceased to be in the scene sank down into the stage. Wow! It was quite a big theatre, quite stylish. Yeah. Oh, that that that's uh, that's a set of, of paintings of mine that I called Spills, and I exhibited with John Whittlemith's uh, parts. And it would be 1975? No, 1985, or 86, 1986, mm. it, it would be. And I'd, I'd, I'd taken a, a, a show away. And, and left this up in the beautiful, gallery. Beautiful yeah. paintings, I think. Really mm. beautiful. You had a retrospective about 2008, didn't you? Yeah. At the same time. We've got a little clip of that as well. This is this is Bob telling us about his retrospective very energetically. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bob Devereux. I'm the director of the Salt House Gallery in St Ives. I've had it since 1979. It's a nice little gallery, three rooms, and I've given a lot of people shows there, but I'm going to be really indulgent next year. In March 2008 and for April 2, I'm going to have an exhibition of my paintings through the whole gallery and alongside that I'm going to show what I've been doing as a poet in a sort of retrospective way. It'll really be something different for me and I'm very excited about it. I hope you can come. See you there. March next year. Cheers. Oh, the, ne uh, the, the next one down. So that's Adrian. Adrian. <clears throat> yeah, that's Adrian. And that's in the Salt House and that's in the Arts, is it? Mm -hmm. Uh, that 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 one uh, is is on the road and and I can't remember exactly where it was and Ev Evelyn Holloway took that photograph and it's only when and well it, when it was when she showed it to me that I realised something extraordinary about it because the 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 painting is called the balancer mm. and uh, the triangle. Is the is the balance, <laughs> and the balancer is balancing <coughs> on my head, yeah. <laughs> and I look as if I'm precariously balancing, <laughs> <laughs> which I am, <laughs> and all that, I'm sure we all are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then, yeah. So that's you, but Adrian, a Adrian uh, has has become. Uh, easily the best com companies, uh, you know, in the spontaneous. <coughs> Why would you say that was the case, Bob? Hmm? Why would you say that was the case? <clears throat> I don't. I don't know. Well, he, 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 he doesn't uh, improvise something and then repeat it every time I do the poem. Mm. He, he, he does something different, mm. and and I respond to the the change. To, Play, yeah. and he responds to the words in a different way because yeah. of that. Yeah. It makes it very live. Yeah, is that something you work towards finding finding that combination of things? Well, it's the sort of thing I'm looking for when I'm working mm -hmm. with music. I, I mean, I work with music uh, musicians uh, and and work publicly with them without ha ever having performed with them before mm -hmm. and, and, and slotting my words through the music mm -hmm. and hoping that the musician will get an idea of the meaning and the music yeah. that's in the words yeah. and that there will be some exchange yeah. and that's very much uh, with, with Adrian. Yeah. And I, I'd, I'd known him <coughs> since he came down to Cornwall 
and even performed in a club that he ran in Penzance once or twice. But I compared clubs and, and, and introduced him for years and years. Well, he, he was in the early 70s, mm. I, I first met him. And it was really quite recently that we started working together. And he has one problem, which is that he had a heart condition and uh, a heart op operation. And afterwards, uh, this is before I started performing, uh, his, his fingers uh, don't always uh, work well. And I think it's returned to a really difficult place now, at the minute, where he said he, 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 he wants to have me go and make a film with him mm. in his garden, mm. rather than uh, accompany him. Do it like, yeah. Yeah. Which uh, I'll do. Yeah. But it's very sad, because he is very special to me. Very special. Ah, another opera, The Two Lockets. And this, this one, uh, uh, Kent Opera, um, had actually, uh, just before they ceased to exist, had, had talked about sponsoring people to stage operas. And uh, it was a response to them that led to this opera. And uh, Chris and I worked on it, and when it was staged in Northampton, uh, Kent Opera supplied uh, a stage, a two-tier stage, which was put on on the stage there. Um, I've forgotten the name of the. It might be. <coughs> yeah, I don't know that it is. It may not be the same one. But um, there is there is um, uh, a. A, a little hall where things are presented which now has a two tier stage at the back of it permanently mm -hmm. to be used which is the result of the children's opera and the way they decided to film uh, to, to stage the children's opera Were these recorded Bob? <clears throat> Do you know? No, don't think so um, oh, Chris Brown might have recordings. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think he probably has. Like elaborate staging, costumes. Mm. But that, yeah. Yeah, Pauline came with me to see that opera. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah. And uh, brought, brought the boys and it's... Maxwell, Maxwell Lou, who taken the photo. Uh, I, I, I could see the potential of where we were, and he was eager to take a photograph. So I, I, I staged it. I set my arm up, look, so that it's at the same uh, angle as the necks of the two giraffes. <laughs> I'm not told anybody that really. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but it was part of com composing it <laughs> and, and, uh, and I really think it's a lovely photograph it is a lovely and Maxwell can be very proud of it yeah. <laughs> and, and that, that that's uh, can't go down again that, that's at our wedding Ah. And uh, and Tom Hall and um, Jay and and her new son Peter there and and a group that Tom brought down called the Strong Up Sisters <coughs> and on the day before the wedding Tom and the Strong Up Strong uh, Sisters played with me in Penzance. And the day after our wedding, when we uh, 
uh, arrived in <coughs> Paris uh, uh, on our honeymoon. <coughs> uh, somebody came to take a photograph uh, and came and was there on hand, and 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 we asked them if they'd take a photograph, and they proceeded to tell us that they knew Tom Hall and would be seeing him the next day mm -hmm. in, a, in a performance in Northampton. And a small <laughs> world. That, that, that makes for a very small world. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, that, that, that's the feast. That, the wedding feast? Yeah. Gosh. You know, basically, everybody brought food. And we had it in the parish hall. And then uh, when, when it got too full of food, we spilled out into the graveyard. And <laughs> Bobborn and uh, or I can't remember who was sitting out there. Uh, Rose Hilton, I think. Yeah. And uh, various people were sitting on the gravestones. Oh, that's a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got that one. No, no, yeah. um, and and that's us. That's the happy couple. Uh, that's the couple, and that was taken by the, the women who were going to see Tom <laughs> the mm -hmm. next night. Oh. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> that's next. The Salt House Gallery, and two of my paintings on exhibition there and the left hand one which is called Dreams of, <coughs> of Summer Sailing was bought by a man from a hotel uh, to go in a room with four, four sails I, well, we may see them in a minute or may not I can't remember whether I've included them and um, Anyhow, he, he hung it in, in, in this foyer of his hotel with the sails and he then proceeded to commission me to paint three more paintings. Uh, and, and then after that, more paintings. He, he's been very good for me. Yeah. Sort of patron he was. Yeah. And working <laughs> in the guild for me. Yeah. A stranger in a st strange world. I was in that one. Our guy is uh, Emerald Dawn. Isn't it? Emerald Dawn. Is, uh, <coughs> Sorry. Emerald Dawn. Yes, that's right. Trey em and Ali. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's the square. Yeah, and and, and then what's uh, gone yeah. down here? Is that? Um, yeah. Well, that that really is history. I don't know why I put it in that position. But that's, uh, yeah, I, I got a, I got a, yeah, it's earlier on really, I got a, uh, I got a, an invitation to go and read in the garden, and I read my own poetry, and other people's, and really got a crowd in the garden, and then uh, came back to the garden, and worked with musicians on two subsequent days in the garden, and I loved that. Love doing it, and I love that photograph. It wouldn't happen now, would it? I think it would, because Zara looks after the garden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's taking a, an exhibition on tour with Jane Yates Potts. A little clip to put in now. Number four, Steve. This is Queen of the Gypsies. Oh, yeah. 1974 and not performed by me with anybody after Clive Palmer until... Oh. <laughs> oh. Did you know that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go then. <laughs> the Queen of All the Gypsies. Mrs. Rosie Lee is sitting in her caravan, reading cups of tea, and Uncle Ebenezer, with his Ouija board, is waiting in the corner, 
Waiting for the world. Waiting for the world. Gaze into my crystal ball. Gaze into my crystal ball. Oh, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. There's lots of people in there. Lots of people in there. None of them is me. None of them is me. The foreman in the factory is into Palmer Street. And Dr. Rab McKenzie, Dr. Rab McKenzie is for phrenology. for phrenology. The mystics on the mountain, the mystics on the mountain. all say the, world must end. say the world must end. But the lonely young musician, lonely young musician is just trying to find, trying a, friend. To find a friend. Gaze into the crystal ball. Gaze into my crystal ball. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. There's lots of people in there. There's lots of people in there. But none of them is me. None of them is me. Walking granite edges. Heard the white gull scream. Saw the sea below him. Green as a dream. And she was beckoning to him from her salty bed. The sea is calling to me. I'll go to her, he said. Gaze into the crystal ball. Gaze into my crystal Come, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. There's lots of people in there. Lots of people in there. None of them is me. Stepped out into giddy space, flew down to the sea. The shell I'm wearing's broken. I'll let the bird go free. Gaze into the crystal ball. Tell me what you see. I see the bold Atlantic. I see the greening sea. I see the white birds gliding. I see the young man fall. I see nothing. I see nothing. I see nothing. 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 Nothing in my crystal ball. Lots of people in there. None of them is me. The queen of all the gypsies. Mrs. Rosie Lee. Still sitting in her caravan. Still reading cups. And that's lovely. Back to the slides. Ah, now, <clears throat> tell us about this, Bob. I was approached to write words to be carved into handrails uh, beside the tamer. That's uh, part of that. It was done by. Uh, the cutting was done by somebody called Andrew Whittle. I can't forget <laughs> that. <laughs> Very useful. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, uh, yeah, I think he made a beautiful job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, so so they they're um, in Saltash, and they're um, along. The, uh, a stretch of land looking across the river but also beside a stream that's where this bit is in the morris with a little board between us placed on a large green cushion it was a wonderful experience i'll never forget it. we were
dressed in a light brown lounge suit with a good trouser crease, a white shirt with a soft linen collar, and a red tie. I was making a statement. You have to make a statement sometimes. <laughs> it's imperative. <laughs> celebrate that big event because Bob's been such a big part of the arts club and still is. Um, we commissioned uh, Beth to do a portrait of you <coughs> and um, we decided we'd let you choose how it was mounted and, 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 and framed yeah. but we've also uh, had a copy done um, which will stay permanently on the wall oh. and if my uh, handsome assistant Phil, who doesn't even know about this yet, <laughs> behind you, is, uh, on the wall, is, uh, is the copy. If you kind of lift it up, you can... Yes, yeah. Be careful, it's... Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh. You decide what colour frame mount you want uh, yeah, for it, yeah, we'll yeah. get that done and we'll, uh, we'll present it to you. <laughs>